Later in the day, President Bush welcomed leaders of the American Muslim community to the White House to discuss the impact of this month's terrorist attacks on their community. As the meeting began, the president spoke with reporters in the Roosevelt Room. His comments are about 10 minutes. I'll try, John. <laughs> It's my honor to welcome uh, to the White House uh, my fellow Americans, Arab Americans, Americans who uh, are Muslim by faith, uh, to uh, discuss about um, the current incidents that took place, the aftermath of the incident, um, and what our country is going to do to make sure that uh, everybody who's American is respected. I uh, have told the nation more than once that ours is a war against evil, against extremists, that uh, the teachings of Islam are the teachings of peace and good, uh, and uh, the Al-Qaeda organization uh, is, a, is not an organization of good, an organization of peace. It's an organization based upon hate and evil. I uh, also want to assure my fellow Americans that uh, when you pledge allegiance to the flag with your hand on your heart, you pledge just as hard to the flag as I do. That uh, the outpouring of support for our country has come from all corners of the country, including mem many members of the Muslim faith, and for that I am grateful. I appreciate the contributions of time, the contributions of blood to help our fellow Americans who have been injured. And um, I'm proud of, the, I'm proud of the, the Muslim leaders across America who've risen up and uh, who and have not only insisted that America be strong, but that America keep the values intact that have made us so unique and different, the values of respect, the values of freedom to worship the way we see fit. And uh, I also appreciate the prayers to the, the universal God. And so I want to thank you all for coming. I don't know if you all remember the Iman was led the service at the National Cathedral. I, he did a heck of a good job, and uh, we were proud to have him there. And I, I want to thank, thank you very you. much for the, the <laughs> gift you gave me, Iman, the Quran. It's a very thoughtful gift. I, I said thank you very much for the gift. He said it's the best gift I could give you, Mr. President. And I appreciate that very much. Mr. President. All right. Thank, thank you all you very much. Thank you all. 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 He's thinking that somebody needs to be held accountable for what has been characterized by some people as a massive intelligence failure. I wonder what you think of his comments as he's trying to inject politics in this. Does someone need to fall on the sword, if you will, over what happened? Oh, I, John, uh, the, uh, uh, the intelligence uh, gathering capacity of the United States is, uh, is uh, doing a fine job. Uh, these terrorists had burrowed in our country for over two years. They were well organized. They were well planned. They uh, they struck in a way that was unimaginable, and uh, we uh, we are we, we are a united nation, and we're going to go forward with uh, uh, our war against these terrorists. Uh, with, and our nation should have all the confidence that the intelligence gathering capacity of the United States is uh, is doing everything possible to not only keep us informed about what's happening overseas, but to keep us informed about what might happen here at home. So, how would you characterize his comments over the last few days? Well, he's a concerned American. I mean, I, I, I'm sure other Americans are asking, how could this have happened, including the president? Mm -hmm. But what the Americans need to know is that I'm receiving uh, excellent intelligence. The CIA is doing a fine job. The FBI is responding on every single uh, lead we're getting, and that uh, we're doing everything we can to make the, the homeland safe, as well as everything we can to, uh, uh, to bring the people to justice. Mr. President, granted, granted the extremism, do you, and I'd like to ask you, Mom, the same question. Do you consider Bin Laden a religious leader or a political leader? I consider Bin Laden an evil man. And uh, I don't think there's any religious justification for what he has in mind. Islam is a religion of love, not hate. This is a man who hates. This is a man who's declared uh, war on innocent people. It's a man who doesn't mind destroying women and children. Is a man who hates freedom. This is an evil man. But does he have political goals? He has got evil goals, and it's hard to it's it's hard to con, 
uh, think in conventional terms about a man so dominated by evil that he's willing to do what he's what he thinks he's going to get away with, but he's not going to get away with it. Sir, there are thousands of more layoffs in the airline industry today. What is the administration going to do about uh, Come to Chicago tomorrow. <laughs> thank, you thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you guys. Here we go now. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. I want to shut this down, so let's just go down. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Let's go. Well, uh, his, Steve's, uh, Steve's question was on the Middle East. Sorry, Gordon. All right. Yes. That's what happens when you invite guys on the invite John Roberts in here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steve asked about the Middle East. Uh, we're encouraged that there are discussions going on that could lead to the implementation of Mitchell. There is a framework for peace. There is the process uh, now available. It's the Mitchell plan, which uh, everybody agreed to is the right way to get to a, a peaceful resolution in the Middle East. And uh, uh, there was a series of discussions that took place. Uh, there will, hopefully there'll be more discussions, and that the, both parties get into Mitchell, and that's going to be good for the, good for America, and it'll be good for the, the Middle East, and good for the world. And so we're hopeful. Uh, you know, I don't know if you remember, but I said out of this uh, uh, crisis, this tragedy that hit America, I do see opportunity, and one of the opportunities would be that there's some uh, sensible thinking that goes into the. Uh, into the Middle East, and that people now realize that that uh, this violence, this, this this terrible destruction of human life, uh, is is uh, is not the correct path to follow, and that hopefully people use this example as a the incidents that took place on September 11th to bring some some reality uh, to the Middle East, and that there'd be and, and anyway the, the discussions are moving on, and I want to thank the Secretary of State for staying with it, staying on the phone, and encouraging. Uh, uh, both parties to get to the table, and we'll see what happens. We're hopeful. Mr. President, what's your thinking on Chechnya in light of uh, what's happening? Since well, first of all, uh, it, it, to the extent that there are uh, terrorists in Chechnya, Arab terrorists uh, uh, associated with the Al Qaeda organization, uh, I, I believe they ought to be brought to justice. As I, as you heard me say, that are. Our initial phase of the war on terrorism is against the Al-Qaeda organization, and we do believe there's some Al-Qaeda folks in Chechnya. However, I do believe it's very important for uh, President Putin to uh, deal with the Chechnya minority in his country uh, with respect, respect of human rights and respect of difference of opinion about religion, And uh, uh, for example. And so I, I, I would hope that the Russian president, while dealing with the Al-Qaeda organization, also respects minority rights within his country. Mr. President, tomorrow you'll be announcing some new security measures. Uh, one of them likely to include some federal role in training airport security personnel and monitoring their work as time goes on moving forward. Well, uh, we're going to deal with airport security tomorrow as well as other, other measures to try to uh, convince the American public it is safe to fly. One of my concerns is that this uh, terrible incident has said to many Americans, uh, uh, convinced many Americans to stay at home. and. One of the keys to economic recovery is going to be uh, a vital industry, the, the vitality of the airline industry. And I, I presume many of you came to Washington today by, by flying, and, and you're here safely. And uh, uh, it's, uh, again, we'll, 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 we'll announce some confidence-boosting uh, measures, some concrete uh, proposals, and I believe we'll be able to work with Congress to get them done in an expeditious way. You don't support Army pilots? Army pilots? Army pilots. Oh, Army. I, as I said, I'd look forward to um, any suggestion um, that uh, there may be better ways to do it than that, but I'm open for any suggestion. I, and the good news is, is that there's a willingness uh, on Capitol Hill to work with the administration and vice versa to come up with constructive sound ways to, to convince the American public it's safe to fly. How quickly do you think you can put these plans in place? Oh, some of them will be... Uh, some of them will take a while. Some of them can happen very quickly. And um, um, just give me a chance to give my speech. You're trying to jump the gun on me, Stretch. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing it well, too, my boy. Thanks. Thank you, guys. John, no longer can you say I haven't answered your question. <laughs> One of the three ain't bad. That's right. right. <laughs> 333. All right. Thank you. Gordon, good, good job. No questions. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, all right Thank you all. <laughs> <laughs> all right.